Hey, we're at the home of one of our sprinkler warehouse customers. Today we're making this instructional video for you on how to install a sprinkler system, where every valve, every sprinkler head, and the controller are supplied by our good friends at Rainbird. Sprinkler Warehouse doesn't do installs, we just sell the parts. I'm Adrian Sanchez, your Sprinkler Warehouse Pro. Let's get started. The first task is to flag the location of each sprinkler valve according to the sprinkler system design. Using different colored flags for each zone will help simplify the installation. Marking spray will show the exact location of where to dig the trenches. After turning off the water supply, dig up the main water line near the water meter. The reason we're next to the water meter is we want the most amount of volume and water pressure to feed our sprinkler system. So here we are at where we've split off our main line into our irrigation line. It is a one inch pipe with a ball valve. Now the bottle valve is there so we can turn off water to our irrigation system while maintaining water flow to the rest of the home. We also got this valve box that goes over our ball valve and once we fill it in with dirt and we need to work on it later, we'll be able to remove the lid right here and get in and turn off our water without having to mess around with digging it all out. Trenching is the most time consuming and physically demanding part of this job. Do it yourself or you're going to want to get several friends to help you dig. So this is a backflow prevention device. This is a pressure vacuum breaker, or a PVB. Now, most cities or water districts require some kind of backflow prevention device when you're installing sprinkler systems because it keeps contaminated water from flowing back into your drinking water source. So whether you're using an anti-siphon or pressure vacuum breaker, we recommend some kind of backflow prevention. All right, so now that we've installed our ball valve and our main line, we can turn the water onto the rest of the home. As you can see, the roots on this property pose a pretty significant challenge. So uh, what we did is remove the ones that got in the way of our valve wire. Make sure to use Schedule 40 PVC pipes between the point of connection and the inlet side of the valves. All right, this is a premium manifold kit from Sprinkler Warehouse uh, attached to our valves here. We're using that in our in our irrigation system for this home. Now, for this, as opposed to uh, hard piping it in, this is much faster and easier to replace and to install. You take it in, now you do glue in the premium kit right there, but if you need to replace the valves, it's as easy as this. You dig it up, you unscrew it, you pop out one valve, bring in another valve, that is a lot quicker than having to glue and to cut this entire thing apart and back together if you're trying to replace your valves or even just installing them. Just screw it on and you're good to go. After the valves, because there's a lot less water pressure, it's safe to use class 200 pipe to feed the sprinkler heads and that can save you a little bit of money. Uh, full blast. Yep. To run the pipe under the driveway, we recommend using a water powered boring kit that we have at Sprinkler Warehouse. What you do is you put a high pressure nozzle on the end of your class 200 pipe and you slowly push it in there and the water pressure pushes the dirt out of the way, creating a tunnel for the pipe to go through and then just connect that to the rest of your system. So if you were to have your sprinkler head attached to an old school nipple riser like this and they were getting run over by a vehicle or a really heavy riding lawnmower, you would probably break your nipple riser, possibly break your sprinkler head, and even worse, break your PVC pipe. This uh, swing joint right here completely prevents that as it's flexible and it can move at the joints. And it also makes it easier for adjusting the height of your sprinkler head just in case the grass clippings were to change the height of the uh, ground right there. You just dig it up, put a little dirt underneath it, and swing it up a little bit and adjust at the joints. Here we are with our, our wire. This is direct burial wire, which means we do not have to run a conduit in order to bury this underground. Uh, we got three red wires right here for our three valves right over there. We have some obstacles in addition to everything else here in this yard, and I'm standing on them. This sidewalk right here is actually a big obstacle for our wires and our piping. We've gone underneath it right here with a conduit and some water pipe as well. And we're gonna run our red wires and one common wire through this one piece of PVC pipe to our valves and all the way around to the backyard and to our controller that's inside the garage. So this right here is a little coil. Now what this does is it adds a little bit of a extra protection against power surges. Boom, coil. I'm gonna do that to all of them. 
In order to avoid electrical shorts when connecting the direct burial wire to the valve wires, make sure to use waterproof silicone filled wire connectors. So you want to overfill your trenches when you're filling them back in, otherwise when the soil gets wet and begins to settle, it'll sink down a little bit. You want to tamp it down, get it nice and compact, that way you don't leave any signs of uh, trenches in your yard. So basing a bed of crushed rock under your valves can help with drainage and provide a nice solid foundation in case anything heavy ever rolls over on top of it. So here I am at the eve of the house installing this rain sensor. We want this to be above where the sprinklers are going to be spraying because we obviously don't want water to get into here, otherwise it's going to turn off a controller. Now, in order to protect your wires from damage, you're going to want to run it through some PVC conduit from where it comes out of the ground all the way to your smart controller. Next, we'll flush the system and open the test cocks on the backflow device. Leave the air and make sure to turn the water on very slowly at the backflow preventer to avoid any pipeline damage. All right, now we got all the wires running to our controller. We have our rain sensor wire right here. We're gonna hook that up. We got our common wire. We're gonna hook that up as well. We're gonna turn the power onto this thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip the red wires one by one, and we're gonna to touch them to a powered terminal. What that's gonna do is gonna to start to isolate which wire goes to which zone, because we don't know which wire goes to which zone at this point. So if we turn on terminal number one and start touching a wire to it, what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn on one of the zones in our yard. So let's just say it turns on zone number five, then we know that that wire goes to zone five, so we'll count one, two, three, four, five, and we'll connect it to zone five over here. Then we'll strip another wire, touch it to the powered terminal, and go on down the line until we know which wire goes to which zone, and then we connect it to that corresponding zone. There we go. Rainbird has supplied all the sprinklers for this install. Today we're using Rainbird Variable Arc Rotary, or R vans, and HE, or High Efficiency Van, spray nozzles. Now, they all come in a wide variety of throw distances. So here we got the Rainbird R van adjustable rotary nozzle. These are the R van 14s, 18, and 24. Those numbers indicate how far these actual nozzles can throw water. So the 24 is gonna shoot 24 feet, the 18 is going to shoot up to 18 feet and the 14 up to 14 feet and you can adjust it down if you only need to throw it a little bit less than that. All right, I just installed the HE Van 10. Now that's a spray nozzle that shoots up to 10 feet and can cover an entire 360 degree plane but is adjustable down to the angle that you need. We're in the center of a flower bed here so we're going to go full 360 and it's not quite 10 feet wide so we're going to do maybe about six or seven foot on this. All right, so here I am in front of two nozzles that are right next to each other. Now, why would we need two nozzles right next to each other? We're gonna wanna water our flower bed every day, except for the days when the yard goes off. When the yard is being watered, that's gonna cover the flower bed as well. And we're not gonna need to have this one running. So we're gonna use our controller to program it to make sure we get exactly the kind of water we need. So let's take a look at this HE Van 8 right here. Now HE stands for high efficiency. This one is 12 inches high. That way we can go over our flowers and cover our entire flower bed. And then over here, we're gonna put the R Van 18 in and that is gonna shoot at 18 feet, cover both the, the flower bed and the rest of the yard, all the grass and everything too. Let's get that on here. Just unscrew, stick that in there. There we go, get that on there. And that's how that goes. That's why you have two of them right here. All right, so now we're gonna adjust these sprinkler heads. They might not be pointed in the right direction and they might be over spraying, have a wide angle. We're gonna try to make that angle be just right for this flower bed. So first, we're gonna adjust it this way. The Rainbird R van and HE van nozzle spray patterns and distances are easily adjusted by hand without tools. The rotating stream technology delivers wind resistant large water droplets without misting or fogging. And water usage is reduced by about 33%. That is money in your pocket. Remember, Sprinkler Warehouse has everything for your irrigation needs. So your trees, lawn, flower bed, and gardens are lush and beautiful. And if you have any questions, Remember to speak to one of our superb customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really know their stuff and they will get you squared away. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction. I'm Adrian Sanchez, your Sprinkler Warehouse Pro. See you later, irrigator.